I'm wondering again, I mean, I'm going to go back to this again about the different, the different Buddha natures, like that there's several types of Tathagatagarbha. Yeah. Um, Cause I think that's what I'm understanding from my other reading also. Um, so can you explain that a little bit more? So there's basically three levels or three different types of Tathagatagarbha or how, how many and how does that work? <laughs> so, so basically you can talk about two and the second one like tantric mm. and non-tantric, but they're yeah. pretty close. So if you look, I'm still sharing the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Here. Yeah. So basically, okay, the first one is, is not his view. He just followed Ron Turn mm -hmm. when in 1454, he said that, you know, the Tathaka Garba is the natural purity of mind, right? We're not talking about qualities, we're talking about the natural purity, right? And here is the same, um, um, the same thing, right? In the mind, mental continuum of sentient beings, it's it's also called lineage. It's also called disposition, right? So that's not his view. Okay, so we can pretty much ignore it. Mm -hmm. I put it there just to show how he changed his views, right? Now, in the text written twenty years later, right? He and the other texts later written even further <laughs> uh, late in his life, he started saying that only Mahayana Aryas have Tathagata Garba characterized by the purity from adventitious stains. And um, Tathagata Garba necessarily has to be identified in terms of having positive qualities of the Buddha inseparable from it, right? And again, you can go to those yeah. uh, quotes from the Ratan God of Ibaga, right? Um, nothing to eliminate or it has Everything is already here, etc. <clears throat> now, now the difference here is this. So there are two ways of approaching the Buddha nature. In the essence of sutras and tantras, he talks about it as purity from adventitious stains, right? Which means that remove certain negative qualities have to re uh, be removed, right? Right. And that's only when it has the Buddha qualities. And that starts from, from uh, the first Bodhisattva Bhumi, because that's the only time when one directly sees, starts directly seeing right. reality, right? In the Sun and Sin before, he's talking about, he does talk about the Buddha nature as the purity from Adventistian stains and also natural purity. But now the natural purity, in contrast to the text written in 1454, right? It's not just natural purity like emptiness and uh, freedom from elaborations, but it's natural purity, which is imbued with the positive qualities of that Hagata Garba, right? So mm -hmm. um, now, <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. and then later when we move to, um, to um, yeah, basically uh, just to emphasize, so the Tathagata Garba is never identified from the point of view of uh, suchness or reality that has stains. Rather, it has to be identified as reality that has positive qualities of the Buddha and that necessarily has to be accompanied by separation from stains, right? Obscurations. Now, <clears throat> so now when we move to the first text here, the first text written from his own point of view, right? This is of Sutras and Tantras. So he says, um, according to the second Dharma Chakra, second turning of the will, uh, it's just a negation of all elaborations, but that is not the real Buddha nature. It's just an imputed one. The, the real one is the one coming from the third Dharma Chakra, right? Now, when we talk about the third one, we have Sutra teachings and Tantric teachings in the third Dharma Chakra. So in, in the sutras, right? So we have um, Tathagata Garba, which is sutras, according to him, the sutras of the third Dharma Chakra explain the Buddha nature in two ways, which is true, by the way. It's not he didn't make it up, right? Some of the sutras say that the Buddha nature uh, is um, the, it has all the positive qualities and that Buddha nature is present in all sentient beings. Other sutras 
and also commentaries on those sutras, including, according to him, the Ratnagoda Vibhaga itself, or Sublime Continuum, right, Uttara Tantra itself, interpret the first type of sutras as uh, having a veiled intent. So they said that all sentient beings have the Buddha nature, but they didn't mean it, right? <laughs> and the basis of intent is that, again, primordial mind. That's it, mm -hmm. affirmative negation. So, uh, and the actual Buddha nature starts only from the first Bodhisattva ground as we just described, right? <clears throat> now, a little side note here mm -hmm. on what makes uh, his interpretation of the Buddha nature even more unique is that according to the majority of Tibetan thinkers, the ultimate reality is either permanent or beyond any, um, any concepts or ideas of permanence and impermanence, right? According to him, the ultimate reality and the Buddha nature too is always impermanent, it's momentary. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting because <clears throat> that allows him to treat it as real virtue, for example. I'm writing the whole book right now on all those debates about the ultimate the Buddha nature being virtue or not. <laughs> And so basically he is saying that, yeah, it's virtue because it's, uh, when it meets conditions, it produces positive results, so it's virtuous, you know? So in any way, the ultimate reality is impermanent. It's momentary, it changes moment by moment. Um, <clears throat> but of course it's permanent in terms of the permanence of continuity. It's forever there, For, it's continuity is forever there. Now we move to the, uh, uh, highest yoga tantras, not just tantras in general, but Anuttara yoga tantras, so the highest yoga tantras. So now, what Shakyachuk then said in his early text, um, the essence of sutras and tantras, and what he said all the way later, you know, close to the end of his life, didn't change. It stays the same. Stay the same. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, the Buddha nature of Tathagata Garbha pervades all phenomena, not just sentient beings. It pervades everything, animate and inanimate universe. That's it. Um, but here uh, he makes sort of like a instant distinction between two types in this text, right? Two types of the Buddha nature. One is just um, the naturally present uh, jnana or the innate nature, right? That pervades everything. And the other one is the jnana of innate bliss. Right, that can be produced only through tantric practice, or the practice of the Anuttara Yoga Tantra, right? So that is the, uh, the second one is the real Buddha nature, okay? Mm -hmm. And that pervades all phenomena because after, after all, everything is reduced to mind, mind is reduced to the primordial mind and the primordial mind is imbued with the bliss acquired through tantric practice, right? So that's the Buddha nature, okay? So as you can see, even in this first text, he is already talking about several types of nature um, and describes them differently depending on uh, non-tantric and tantric context. And the main thing to keep in mind is that um, what didn't change, didn't change when we talk about Tantra, right? Is that, um, that the Buddha nature pervades all phenomena, all phenomena. That's what he said there. And that's what he said in his, uh, some of his uh, latest works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, um, when we move to the second text here, right, we're still talking about the predominantly sutric, non tantric text. He does talk about tantras there, but the main point is sutras, right? So now he starts talking about, he divides everything, somewhat similar, by the way, somewhat similar to Dolpova, right? So he divides everything into ultimate and conventional, right? even though he is very critical of the Boba, by the way. But, uh, so he's saying, okay, we have two types of Tathagata relative and uh, ultimate, right? So relative is newly acquired, you know, basically pretty much what you said in the previous text on the sutra level, right? Um, and um, the ultimate one is, um, has all the qualities present. And so when it's said that ultimate, the Tathagata Garbha pervades all living beings. That's the ultimate one. And living beings in that ca uh, case refers to the ultimate living beings, right? Um, when I said it does not pervade all living beings, here we're talking about the relative living beings. <laughs> um, okay. 
And mm. so now he disconnects and he keeps pushing this um, idea throughout his writings. He pretty much disconnects um, jnana and vijnana, primordial mind and consciousness. And so primordial mind is just primordial mind. When we talk about consciousness, it always has the part of primordial mind in it, right? Consciousness doesn't exist, but on conventional level, we say consciousness exists, right? And so, and basically he starts talk, distinguishing between, um, you know, what is real, what is unreal, and uh, shifting more and more away to on the primordial mind. 